Okay, so what I want to do today is take a look at this engine and, and use this engine as a way to talk about power. And more specifically, I want to talk about power as it relates to rotation. Now, we've talked about power before. Uh, in the past, we've defined power as being work over time. Or really power is the rate at which work can be done. Now we can expand this out to look a little bit more uh, math here or apply this to, to physics and engineering as we deal with it. And we can say that work is force times displacement or F dot D if you want to be a little bit more specific over time. Now we've seen in the past, if we draw this just a little bit different or write this just a little bit differently and show this as force times displacement over time, we still have power. We've just simply rearranged this just a little bit so it looks slightly different. And what I want you to realize is displacement over time, well, that's what we call velocity. So we can talk about power as being force times velocity if we want. So what I want to do today is take a look at this engine and try to relate the motion of this engine back to power to look at power in a slightly different way. We're going to relate this to rotations rather than our linear quantities of force and velocity. Now we don't need to know too much about an engine here. I don't want to get into the specifics of how an engine works. This is just a single cylinder. Uh, we've got cylinder walls and this piston is free to move up and down within this cylinder. And as this moves up and down, it pushes a crank or sorry, a connecting rod, which attaches to a crank. And this whole thing is free to rotate around this axis right here. So this crank rotates around as this piston moves up and down. I don't want to get too far into the geometry of an engine. If you look at this real carefully, you're going to find some things just don't quite work in a realistic sense. Uh, but I don't want to get into engines here today. I'm just using this as an example to get us to look at power in a slightly different way. Now what we do need to understand about an engine is that in an internal combustion engine, we'll put some air fuel mixture in here and ignite it. And, and what that does is that pushes this piston down, which pushes this connecting rod, which forces this crank to rotate. So what happens here is this connecting rod pushes on the crank. And so there's a force by the connecting rod on the crank. And ultimately what happens is this force does work. We know that as this piston moves downward, this force is gonna act over some displacement. Going back to our power equation, a force which acts over displacement will do work. So this displacement isn't in a straight line, it's in fact in an arc, kind of like this. So we have a force acts over displacement, there's work. And if this happens in a certain amount of time or any amount of time, which it has to, it can't happen instantaneously. Now we've got power. So force, displacement, and time, it's, it's left us with power. And so we can start talking about the power of engines if you want. Uh, I don't want to today. Just using this as a, a real quick example. But what I wanna do today is take a look at power, not as force times displacement over time, but I wanna look at this in a slightly different way. And sometimes it's more convenient to look at power in terms of torque. So what I want to do is go back and, and look at our equation for torque. You remember our equation for torque is force times radius times the sine of the angle between these two vectors. Now, you can see here that there's a, a force acting by this connecting rod on this crank, which is going to cause it to rotate around this point right here. Now, this crank has a certain radius. So when this force by this connecting rod pushes on this crank, there's gonna to be torque around this point here. Uh, now, the angle between this force and this radius vector, that's gonna vary as this crank rotates around. And what I wanna to do today is look just at the simplified case or right at this instant, right when the force is perpendicular to the radius vector. And that's gonna make this cancel out, which is gonna clean up our math uh, just a whole bunch. I don't wanna get into the mess that is having this sine theta floating around in our, our math here. We don't actually need it for this derivation. Now separately what I want to look at from torque is I actually want to look at 
how far this crank is gonna be allowed to rotate. And we're gonna allow this to rotate through, through some angle. I don't really care what that angle is. But the angle through which this crank rotates, it could be you know a tiny little bit or, or quite a ways around here. I want you to realize that angle can be given by the displacement. That is this arc length as this moves along the circle over the radius. And I know that seems like a strange way to talk about an angle, but I want you to realize if we're talking about angles in radians, that's exactly what's going on here. You'll remember, go back to, to in pre-calc when you start learning the unit circle and all that fun stuff. Uh, really, an angle in radians is just a relationship between an arc length around the edge of a circle and the radius itself. That's why you start memorizing things like pi over 2 and 3 pi over 16 or whatever weird and wacky stuff your math teacher wants you to memorize that year. Um, but realize, if we talk about an angle in radians, it's really just the distance around the edge of the circle over the radius. So be real careful. We're talking about angles in radians here, not degrees. Okay, so now I want to talk about power in a slightly different way. All right, let's take and combine these, and I'll show you how these can, can work out to be power here. If we take torque, that is force times radius, and then we multiply it by our term for radians, that is the displacement or the tangential displacement along the edge of the circle over the radius, you'll notice the radius terms cancel out. And now I've got force times displacement. Well, that's starting to look like what happened up here. And if we allow this to happen in a certain amount of time, so we just say this is in a certain amount of time, now I again have power. I've got force times displacement over time. That is power. So I want to back up a step to what I did here and really where that originated. Once you realize power is equal to torque multiplied by the, the angular distance or the rotations that something goes through, some rotating object, in some amount of time. And this term right here, this theta over time, can be a little bit confusing, an angle over time. That's a little bit hard to understand, but I want you to realize that this term right here, this is what we call angular velocity. Angular velocity is really just a measurement of how fast something is rotating. Now realize we measure angular velocity in radians per second. Now we could talk about angular velocity in something other than radians per second. We could talk about it in terms of revolutions per minute. That's angular velocity. It's just different units. Okay. Uh, but when we go through and we start dealing with things in terms of SI units, uh, we've got to keep everything in terms of radians and seconds. And as far as torque goes, it has to be in Newton meters. And we'll, we'll worry about units at some other point in time. That's not what the purpose of this video here. So another way to talk about power here is this, and I'll clean this up a little bit. Just say that power is torque multiplied by this theta over time. That is what we call angular velocity, this Greek letter omega. And this is our equation for power in terms of rotations. If we put some torque on a shaft like this crankshaft here, and we allow it to rotate at a certain rate, that's going to produce power. And I want you to realize this is really not all that different from when we're talking about force and velocity as being power. Force and velocity being linear terms, torque being the rotational version of force, and angular velocity, naturally, being the rotational version of velocity. So these two equations, that is, this one here and this equation here, they're really telling us the same thing. It's just two ways of looking at uh, the same type of motion. Sometimes it's more convenient to deal with things in terms of force and velocity. That's typically when things are going in a straight line. But if we have something like a, a rotating object, like a crank in an engine, or maybe a gear, that we're putting some torque on, it's more convenient to look at it in terms of power. So this is 
the way to look at power in terms of rotations. And that's all for now. Okay, now I know some some of you may be a little bit upset. I made some approximations in the uh, in the last video and my derivation of torque because I, I threw out a sine theta term. And so I want to go through and show you how to do this without ignoring that sine theta term. And I'll show you the exact same result occurs here. Okay, uh, so what I want to do is just take a simple situation here where we've got a lever free to pivot around this point. And we're going to push with some force down on the end of this lever. And what I'm going to do is I want to show you uh, that the, the power by this force as this turns around is, is still torque times angular velocity. Uh, so let's start at... So let's look at this a little bit different way or in a more, more linear sort of way. And let's let this rod rotate just a little ways. And so if we're to allow this rod to rotate just, just a little ways, and I want to say just a little ways because I don't want to worry about any sort of arc to this, mainly because I don't have a protractor this big. So I'm going to let this go just a little ways, and there's some displacement here. Okay. So when this force is straight down, and this rod makes a certain angle theta with the vertical. And therefore, that same angle is formed against the force. There's some work done, and we can look at this going back to work as being f dot d, and that is f d cosine theta. And what I want you to realize is the angle between the force and the displacement is this angle right here. And this angle right here is not theta, but it is 90 minus theta. So really the work done on the, by this force as this rod rotates over some, some end arc length D is F D cosine. I'm going to put this in terms of our theta term over here. And that's so 90 minus theta. It's 90 minus theta because this angle is 90 minus theta. So now we've got a, a term for work done. Now, if, if we put this over time, we'll get power. But again, we've still got this cosine term in here. And, and well, we don't want that. So I want to clean this up a little bit and go a little farther with this. And I'll show you exactly what's happening here. We know cosine of 90 minus theta is going to be the same as sine of theta. So I've got FD sine theta. Now realize this is the displacement out here. It's not the radius. Okay. Uh, if we want to get this somehow back to relating this to torque and, and angular velocity, we've got to somehow deal with relating displacement to the radius. And I want you to realize as we, we go through and we look at our angle, the displacement is the radius times the change in angle. This is a d theta. Uh, it's not d the displacement. This is really a change in angle or the angle through which this rotates. And so we can sub this in here. And now we've got work is f r d theta. Again, this d is not the same as that displacement d. This is d theta. That's one group term. I'll even put it in parentheses just to avoid confusion. In terms of the sine of theta. Well, now I'm going to rearrange this just a little bit. I've got force times radius times sine of theta times d theta. Again, I'll put that in parentheses. This is a small change in angle here. Well, what we see right away, or what hopefully we see right away, is this term right here is torque. And now we've got this d theta. This is a change in angle. And so we've got some work that's done when we allow this rod to rotate. So let's just have that work occur in some amount of time. 
So if we say the time that elapses is gonna be some change in time, what we're gonna wind up with, because we know power is work over time. And we've got a term for work right here. We get F R sine theta d theta over our change in time. Well, if we let this move just a, a very small distance or what we're saying is d theta or a change in theta, that's gonna be over a change in time. And again, if I rearrange this just a little bit more to make it a little clearer, I've got F R sine theta. There's my torque term times d theta over dt. And this right here, my friends, is how we look at angular velocity. And this, I know, pulls a little bit of calculus into this with these infinitely small changes in angular position and infinitely small change in time. But ultimately, what we wind up with here is fr sine theta omega, or wait for it, torque times omega is power. So you can see, even when we pull time into this, or sorry, even when we pull angles into this, so you can see, even when we put angles into this, we find those angles wind up canceling out. So it's not just an incorrect approximation I did previously when we were looking at the engine. Uh, it's just, it was a little bit simpler math. But that's how we properly derive the equation for power by a torque on a rotating object. And again, that's all for now.